Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning in to the 8th Autumn 2025 update from Gasworthy. So here we go, Dan. We're going to bring you more autumn data here, up to our penultima uh, update for the autumn now. Can you believe just got one more update to do uh, next week? And then, of course, we'll be releasing the Gasworthy's autumn forecast two weeks today on the 31st of August. So exciting times, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've got uh, a couple more updates still to do. And, of course, the third and final season one around as well so i shall get on with your eighth autumn update for you in a moment just say that first a minute of shares our six mbk will forecast there will be a set of 14 day on the way later on today as well like share subscribe and all today videos and content thank you so much everyone for doing that thank you so much to ricardo richard short for our lovely autumn updates gift i love it thank you so much rich absolutely incredible and of course thank you so much to subscribe for sorting out our years as well, so hashtag Team Gav as always doing an amazing job. Terry Scott, and let's not forget Terry either. Thank you so much to Terry, to Shrian, and to Richard for sorting everything out. Uh, for us. Love it, guys. Thank you so much. Right, okay, well, this uh, eighth update going to be a bit of an end so special. So, this is how things are current looking in the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean. Of course, ENSO is the cyclical uh, warming of the equatorial Pacific Ocean from uh, Peru in South America to Indonesia over in uh, Asia. And at the moment, across the equator, we can see that cooling is taking place. We've got an area of cold and an average sea surface temperature anomalies in the central portion of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Anyway, although in the east it's a little bit warmer and it is in the far western portion as well. Now, that is uh, seemingly a signature for uh, La Nina. However, we haven't re yet reached La Nina threshold, and we may not do. So, this is how CFSB2 is currently forecasting things uh, to develop in the ENSO region. Uh, temperature dominance on, along the side, and dates in the period on the bottom. All important number is this one, uh, 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.5, half a degree or more. Uh, below average uh, is the threshold we've got to reach to be at uh, minimum landing uh, threshold. I'm going to run that over five tri monthly periods as well. Now, at the moment, we are actually short of that. We're somewhere between 0 and 0 0.5. CFSB2 does predict that by the end of the year, we'll have dropped into uh, landing your threshold just uh, and have a weak landing year before coming back up again into uh, 2026. However, it looks as though it's probably going to be an Enso neutral autumn uh, and on the cold side of Enso neutral though. Which does make it a bit problematic. It's not all that many years that uh, do that. But there are some. And uh, these are the years uh, that we've got for you. So the first autumn on the cold side of Enso Neutral we've been able to come up with is 1950. This very wet and unsettled autumn with low pressure dominating from off the Atlantic. That's a bit of a deluge autumn that we have in 1950. In some ways a bit similar to uh, the autumn of 2000. Uh, then we've got 1961 as our next uh, Enso neutral autumn, but on the cold side with uh, lower pressure in the Atlantic, higher pressure up towards Scandinavia. That's quite an unsettled autumn as well. We've got 1962, it's a drier autumn, but it's quite a lot colder. It's a very cold year, of course, in 1962. This has a ridge out to the west and to the northwest with lower pressure down to our south. So just generally a relatively quietish uh, autumn, not a lot going on. But the main notable feature is the low temperatures has uh, some early season frost, particularly in November, and in some snow in November. Of course, it's just it's the, season that's just, it's the season that's just preceding the dirty of cold winters. But I shall not go there. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Uh, that's more for the winter updates. When winter updates will be starting three weeks today on the 7th of September. Goodness gracious me. Doesn't time fly? Well, man, back to autumn. Again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Back to autumn. Our next <laughs> autumn on the cold side of Enso Neutral is 1966. It's also a wet autumn as well, putting a low pressure through the north and west Europe. That's a very wet year, of course. 
in uh, 1966 in October. Unfortunately, we had the Abervan uh, disaster as a result, partly anyway, of uh, the deluge that we have throughout the year. And then a mild Atlantic-driven and settled uh, rather wetty shorts again in 1967. A long gap then through to uh, 1980. So uh, the autumn of 1980 looks like this. So air pressure to the northeast and out in the Atlantic. Bit of a ridge up towards Iceland. So it has a warm, it's quite a strange autumn in 1980. It has a warm and dry, uh, warm and dry September. Goes very wet into October, I think. And then uh, end of October, start of November, we actually have a really unusually cold spell. And it's, it's actually a white bonfire night for some places. And not just white from frost, but also white from snow, can you believe? However, uh, November 1980, I don't think it's a particularly cold month. So very strange autumn that we have there with a lot of variation from month to month. Then we've got 1985 as our... Next autumn, with above average heights, high pressure through the uh, west of Europe. So again, that's quite a strange autumn. Has a has a relatively dry and uh, quite uh, mild September, uh, October also has quite a lot of uh, mild weather. And then we get into November. It turns much colder in November of 1985. A proper wintry. Uh, November there uh, before it goes mild for most of December and then the cold comes back of course later on in the winter uh, we've got 1996 our next uh, autumn on the cold side of Enso neutral with below average heights covering much of Europe above average heights around the Azores we tend to be in <coughs> Excuse me, everyone, from the north, from the northeast. So, uh, again, that has a lot of variation. A lot of dry, relatively mild weather in September, October. More unsettled, very mild. And then some early cold saps in November. 1996 in November does have a couple of uh, snowy interludes. 2001 is our next autumn that we come up with. High pressure at the Atlantic, low pressure to the east and to the northeast. So, that to... Um, a lot of variation. It has a really warm October. I think October 2001 still is the warmest rec uh, October on record within the uh, CT. bit cooler for uh, September, though. And uh, November does have a couple of cold snaps uh, also. We've got 2005. This one with above average heights away to our east. So a lot of southerly winds in that autumn. Very warm September often quite wet. Uh, October also uh, very warm. I think we're reaching 21 degrees, for example, in the third week of the month. Uh, very mild into the first half of November. We had a big flip in the middle part of uh, November, the second half of something a lot colder. So, again, quite a strange autumn. You'll notice that a lot of these are, are rather strange and bizarre uh, autumns. We've got 2012, a uh, bit of a deluge autumn after a deluge summer. This one, uh, plenty of low pressure through the northwest Europe. So that's just a very wet autumn, really. Does have a very wet September, which for the era, for the early 2000s, is quite unusual. Uh, especially wet in the uh, final week of September uh, 2012. Uh, and I think overall it could be the wettest September since maybe 1981. Not sure about that. But certainly, you know, it's unusually wet and stands out in an era of generally warm and dry Septembers. And um, we've got 2013 with higher pressure close to the uh, country. Bring um, a drier autumn, that one. Uh, not a lot going on until later in November when it turns very stormy. Of course, that sets up a uh, very stormy winter. That's more into start of December. And then finally, we've got the autumn of 2024. Last autumn actually had, uh, had us on the cold side of then so neutral and it's a rather bizarre pattern with higher pressure through the Atlantic into Western Europe it does have a very wet September which you won't get from that uh, whatsoever but uh, really really wet in September of 2024 again quite unusually quite unusual that for this uh, era uh, and then the rest of the autumn turns generally quite a lot drier but still with some wet Interludes. Okay, well, let's put all of that together, Ben. And this is how all Septembers combined are looking uh, with our uh, Enso neutral autumns 
but on the cold side. And uh, we see that uh, overall it is quite an unsettled signal for these Septembers, but the layer pressure tends to be pushed up more towards the uh, uh, across Northern Europe, actually. But nevertheless, a cooler and a wetter signal, perhaps, for both Septembers. All Octobers combined look quite unsettled, but it's a warmer signal, potentially. Plenty of low pressure in the Atlantic, but also like a west or a southwesterly uh, flow. And then, no, all Novembers combined stands out, potentially bringing some colds out. So you're not surprised with the years that we've got included in this, like 19... 62 and 1985 and 2005, uh, you know, which all had some pretty pokey cold spells and 1980, some pretty pokey, uh, potent cold spells in uh, those November. So, overall, we get Mid Atlantic Ridge appearing just about getting up towards south of Green, not quite. Low pressure across northern and also central Europe. And winds often coming in, therefore, from a northwesterly or potentially even a northerly direction. It's definitely a kind of signal there uh, for the Novembers. And uh, lastly, all autumns combined, following uh, years uh, of autumns that are on the cold side of the neutral, looks like that. So it's an unsettled signal overall, particularly for northern Europe, but also in western Europe is included in that, and a bit of a cooler signal maybe uh, as well. So quite interesting how that's working out. Okay, well, that is your 8th Autumn 2025 update. If you have enjoyed the video, please give us a like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, so, um, for dear man. And that's our end so special done. And that's got one more update to bring you uh, next week. And then, of course, it's Autumn Forecast time in a couple of weeks. Thank you so much to uh, Richard Shaw for our amazing Autumn Updates gear. Thank you so much, so, so much, Rich. Thank you so much to uh, Shrine Brim for sorting out all the years. And thank you so much to Terry for us uh, being my guiding hand on the shoulder as ever. Hashtag Team Gav. Amazing job. Thank you so much, guys. Right, we'll end it there. Gonna be back. We'll go, we're going to be back a little bit later on. We can take the 14 day. Come back for that in a bit. But for the 8th Autumn 2025 update from Gav's Webinar, that's all now. And thanks so much.